Hello, this is Eric D. Kirk for MamaWorld.com and welcome to this tutorial about Beat Edit for Premiere Pro. Beat Edit analyzes your music clips and detects beats and other rhythmically relevant points fully automatically. It visualizes these points as markers in your Premiere Pro timeline so that you can easily place your cuts in sync with the beat. You can also create a quick edit fully automatically and this is exactly what I'm going to show you in this tutorial. I have here the Surfing HD stock footage collection from Artbeats and a music clip from Premium Beat. And with the help of Beat Edit, we will create the following edit. We start Beat Edit with the menu command Window, Extensions, Beat Edit. Then we open the audio file that we want to use and Beat Edit automatically starts its beat detection. The detected beats are visualized with the blue lines that you can see here. And if we play the music you can also hear a click sound at each beat. You can control the volume of this music with this slider and the volume of the click sound with this slider. Or you click on the speaker icon to mute the click sounds completely. Since we don't want to have a cut at each beat, we can now select the beats that we want to use. Let's say we choose in entire song select automatically one beat every four beats evenly and click select. Now you can see that every fourth beat is shown in blue. Depending on where we have our playhead, when we click select, different beats are selected. This is because Beat Edit always chooses the beat that is nearest to the playhead. We can also click select while the music is playing. This is very convenient since we just need to click select when a specific beat is playing to ensure that is included in the selection. Now let's say we don't want to use the last two selected beats here. Then we just highlight this region and choose In Highlighted Region Remove from the Selection One Beat Every One Beats. And if we click Select, all beats in the highlighted region are removed from the selection. To create more variants, you can also select the beats more randomly or even add extra markers that are not located at beats, but which are still rhythmically relevant locations. But we are going to cover this in a separate tutorial. Now let's bring our beat information in the Premiere Pro timeline. Beat Edit can generate two kinds of markers, clip markers and sequence markers. Let's first choose clip markers and click create markers. Since our audio file is not yet in our Premiere Pro project, Beat Edit imports the audio file in the currently active bin. If you have already imported the audio file before, Beat Edit notices this and does not import it a second time. If we drag it into the timeline and make sure the audio track is large enough, you can see the markers here, right in the audio clip. Again, there is exactly one marker for each of the blue beat markers here in Beat Edit. Having the markers in the audio clip is useful if you use them as guides for a manual edit. But for the automatic edit I want to show you here, we need sequence markers instead. So we click Delete All and you can see that the clip markers are not visible anymore. Now we choose to create sequence markers instead of clip markers and click on Create Markers again. Now our markers are shown as sequence markers here at the top of the timeline. Note that in order to create sequence markers you must have placed your audio file already in the currently active sequence so that Beat Edit knows where to place the markers. Next, we select the clips we want to use. We make sure we select them exactly in the order in which they should appear. So let's say we first choose the clips of these guys standing at the beach, then all these clips where they are surfing, and at the very end, I want to have this guy here looking at the beach. Now we move the current time indicator to the beginning of the song and click the Automate to Sequence icon here at the bottom of our bin. In the options, we make sure that ordering is set to Selection Order and place it set to At Unnumbered Markers. Then we click OK, and as you can see, the clips are now all inserted into the sequence and the cuts are exactly at the markers. Let's take a look at what we have so far.
There are two things I want to change. First, the first clip should not start at the first marker, but actually already at the beginning of the song. I make sure that the current time indicator is at the beginning of the song and then I choose marker, add marker, or the M key to insert an extra marker. When you insert extra markers like this, make sure that no clip is selected, since otherwise you generate a clip marker instead of a sequence marker. The second thing I want to change is that I want to change for this clip the part that is actually visible, because as you can see there is only the wave visible, but later on in this clip also a surfer appears which will look more interesting. You can do this by using the slip tool. Just click and drag the clip to choose the part of it that should be visible. Alternatively, you can also adjust the endpoint of your clip before you run the automate to sequence command. To do this, we just double click on the clip in our bin to open it in the source monitor. Then we move the current time indicator to the point in time where we want our clip to start and click the marker in icon here. So let's quickly recreate our edit by first deleting all clips in the sequence, then selecting them again in the order in which we want them to appear, and finally clicking the Automate to Sequence icon. As you can see, due to our extra marker, the first clip now starts exactly at the beginning of the music. Also, this clip now starts exactly at the new endpoint that we've just set. And this is our final result. As you can see, we were able to create an automatic edit pretty quickly and still had a lot of control about many details, like selecting specific beats to control the overall pace of the edit. Obviously this clip was pretty small, and for longer edits the amount of time you save is even more significant. Thanks a lot to Artbeats for providing the stock footage clips and to Premium Beat for providing the music used in this tutorial. Again, this is Eric D. Kirk for MamaWorld.com and we hope you have fun experimenting with Beat Edit. We'll see you next time.